be a great people, Kalel. They wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. For this reason, above all, their capacity for good. I have sent them you, my only son. Hey, Expert Knights, you're now rocking with your boy KOR X Kalel, the last son of Planet Xbox, and you're listening to Super Pod Shots. Um, you know, before we get started, man, I just want to shout out AC Bongos for coming on the show last week. Really appreciate him stopping by and giving us his perspective on Xbox One and how it's faring in Europe, and of course, his thoughts on Gamescom. Um, and we all know how we all felt about Gamescom, seeing some of those excellent games that's supposed to be coming out in 2016. Uh, I also want to shout out my man B Money 101, a uh, Tick Podcast member. Uh, unfortunately, he has had a loss in the family um, and will be away for some time as the family heals. So, you know, prayers go out to him, guys. You know, we hope to have him back sooner rather than later. And of course, uh, you know, Tick Podcast itself will be on hiatus. Uh, we will be having some guest spots on the next couple of episodes and things like that. So if you guys are interested in stopping on Tick Podcast and being a guest spot, please leave a message in the comment section or hit us up on Twitter. And we'll make sure that happens. Now, um, today I, I happen to be surfing the web and come to find out Nintendo has released their patent for their NX console. Now, you guys know how I feel about Nintendo. You know, I grew up with Nintendo. It was the console. I thought that nothing could touch it. I was not a Sega fan. I know there's some Sega fans out there and I know Sega has some great games, but in my opinion, Super Nintendo was it, was it, it was the console, you know, everything about it just seemed perfect so you know my love for nintendo started to fade once you know the first original playstation came out and i got the first ps1 i didn't get a 64 and i missed out on so many games and i'm glad i'm able to pace play some of those rare titles today but they're coming out with a new console and the one thing i've been wanting from nintendo for a very long time is for their next console to be a powerhouse console it can be more powerful than playstation it could be more powerful than xbox um but but as long as it's on par with at least one of those consoles that it has the power to output something a little bit more mature than what they've been putting out i will definitely pick it up i've been dying to get a nintendo system for the longest time because i just love nintendo it really is it really is like one of my favorite, uh, you know, console companies, platform manufacturers, you know, of all time, just because they have so many mascots and I have so many memories with them. But I digress. I'm just running on. Anyway, the point is, is that they, they came out with this patent for their new console. Now, this console does not have an optical drive. So, no, there is no disc. This is the thing that's boggling my mind. I don't know what Nintendo be thinking with their like with their like peripherals, you know what I'm saying? It's like, they always have these add on features with every single thing that they put out. So it's funny seeing that they don't have an optical drive, but they have a memory card slot. This game, this console, shall I say, it's gonna be an all digital console. It's an all digital console, no optical drive. The whole thing is built on speed. It's built on internet um, and it's, it's built on performance and i don't know that like right now you just have a bunch of placeholders we have no idea what the specs will be but there's just placeholders all over this thing um you know there's there's something for server apparatus like that communicates with the unit from a server that's that's and that's just crazy to me <laughs> that they, they're gonna have this um one of the things that they're noting is that the memory card slot is actually could be used for people who don't have online and want to get the OS updates and you would get a memory card that has the OS on it and you can update it. But my thing is if you don't have an optical drive, what if Nintendo plans on selling you memory cards with games on them? You know, you wind up getting, you go out, you buy a game. You know, Nintendo is known for this. I'm telling you, they are known for these like proprietary, <laughs> the way they put their games out. They're known for this since like the cartridges to the mini disc. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just known for these different, these different, you know, I guess you could say proprietary types of disc in the way they put their games out. I would not be shocked if Nintendo started selling Mario on a cartridge. 
with the digital data on it, you install the cartridge in the memory card slot and it downloads to the console. So you still have physical, but what they wind up doing is removing the space of an optical drive um, which allows you to put in whatever you want to put in replace of it. So this console could possibly be a very, very powerful console. It has a hard disk drive built into it, and it has um, obviously a slot for an external hard disk drive as well. The controller is wireless. Um, the, the really cool thing about it is that the controller itself has a its own window slot, maybe like the, the Wii U, you know, touchpad controller but smaller at least that's the way it seems so i'm very intrigued by the nx now there's two things that can happen in this direction with with nintendo it could either really be the start of the digital age something that microsoft really wanted to do something that they wanted to start but failed at communicating and getting that point across clearly to the public nintendo has the opportunity to sit there and look at the mistakes that microsoft did and flip those and, and take advantage of that and say, hey, look, this is what we're presenting. This is what we're doing. And this is how we're gonna do it at this price. Um, and without an optical drive, that's just another piece that you don't have to worry about financially. Um, so the console could be cheaper as well. Now, what's, what's really intriguing is how will the general public respond? Now, I've already seen some of the comments. Some of the comments already were like, oh my God, is Microsoft all over again? DRM, um, always online, is always bad. I still want to own the physical disc. Look, digital is the future. And in my opinion, the first company, the first company that comes out with digital trade-ins is King. And, you know, I spoke to Phil about this last year. I'm going to speak to him about it this year, as well as Mike Yabrera. I'm going to bring up digital traders. I know it seems like there's no value in digital traders, but if you trade in your license because you own it, you still own that, that you own it. I know it's not physical, but you own it. You know what I'm saying? But if you're able to trade in that digital li uh, digital license for any type of, you know, profit, any type of income that you could put towards another digital title, it can be $15, $20, you know, anything that you could put towards another title, would be huge. Sure, you might not get the full amount of like if you went to GameStop with a physical disc, but imagine not being able to leave the home, trade in a digital game, get $15, $20 back, put that towards another digital game and get it for, you know, 60% of the price or 75% of the price. You're taking almost 15% off of, of the, you know, of the game or whatever. So, I mean, I, I think that's really, really big if if Microsoft was able to pull something like that off, but Nintendo has the opportunity to do that with this NX. And there's so many things that we just don't know um, about it. It's very interesting when you look at the diagram um, and, and really kind of like reflect on what the possibility is with this. I just really hope that they just grow up a little bit i love nintendo i love their platformers i was a big mario kart guy i love mario party and yes i'm an adult and i'm not afraid to admit that <laughs> but you know it's great family games man i love playing that those like the only games my wife plays and i love playing games with my wife i really do um but you know the xbox and the playstation is a little bit too mature for her a little bit too complicated she won't pick those games up or play them unless it's like hexic or those puzzle games you know like uh, Boogie Bunnies or, uh, you know, Hardwood Backgammon, Hardwood Spades. You guys know the deal on 360. So, um, you know, for 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 me, I think the Nintendo platform really fits well in, in a family dynamic. But if they can come out with some mature games, really start pumping out some new IPs, some mature games, and just grow up just a little. I'm not asking them to grow up fully, but just grow up just a little. You got me in a customer. I will buy one day one. I will buy one day one because for me, I like the digital stuff and especially with the showing of Crackdown, if Nintendo figures out how to do cloud compute, they have the console to do it. Wow. The possibilities are just astounding. Even if they did 50% of that, could you imagine destruction in Mario breaking? I mean, the man breaks blocks. Just imagine throwing a fireball and busting through a wall. You know, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Or being able to like just do these crazy things or having more characters on screen and something like Zelda, 
you know, it's just a lot. There's a lot of things that can be done in this regard with the NX, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope that um, it pans out, man. I hope people really give it a chance, give the digital age a chance. I know a lot of fans won't like it, but I, I hope that they figure some things out. Um, Halo 5 Guardians has the largest Halo campaign ever. Um, you get to play the campaign as Master Chief and um, blue and with Blue Team, and you get to play as Locke with Team Osiris. Um, and you get two stories from two different perspectives. This is going to be crazy. Obviously, they have taken out the whole uh, split screen dynamic. A lot of fans didn't like that. For me, eh, I'm not really too concerned about it. Be honest with you. You know, I, I me and my friend, we're both older guys you know i'm not trying to go to his house <laughs> just to play a game split screen you know what i'm saying it's cool to do that but that's why i pay for xbox live that's why i pay my you know 30 bucks or whatever whatever deals i find for xbox live online i pay my 30 bucks 24 dollars for the year and play on xbox live in a party with my homeboy you know on my own 50 inch screen you know, and him on his own 50 inch screen. I don't want to split the screen in half. That was cool back in the day because the online system just wasn't as robust. It was great for LAN parties and things like that. But we're in like, it's 2015, man. Things change. The world is changing. Look at, we got cars that drive by themselves. You know, you got smartphones. You have, uh, uh, you know, the infrastructure for online is just getting better and better. Look, things change. It's just not the same as it used to be. And for the select few people out there who really love split screen, I'm sorry, but I just feel like the majority of people can care less, in my opinion. And I really don't think it would hurt. I don't really think it's going to hurt Halo either way. Um, now, what I think will hurt Halo is the news that there will not be a big team battle. This is, this is a catastrophe to me. This is just devastating. I'm absolutely devastated at the fact that there will not be a big team battle in halo 5 i'm like like you don't understand i might not even buy the game because of this now i'm gonna buy the game i have to play at least the campaign but don't be surprised if i don't trade the game in you know how do you not have a staple in the multiplayer space like that i just don't get it i understand this is gonna have 20 maps and they're gonna have an additional you know 15 free maps those 15 free maps better be big team battle it better be big team battle. You know, this whole eSport thing and what they're trying to do in this eSport thing, they just got Gears of War signed up for eSports too. That's cool, man. I get it. I get the whole eSport thing. I, you know, it's huge. It's huge around the world. I just don't think eSports will ever have the TV appeal that regular sports would have. This is the reason why we watch these things on Twitch and the reason why we watch these things online. Television networks... I just think it won't appeal to everyone, you know, around the world, especially the generation. Now, let's say in 30 years or 15 years, all the gamers who grew up will be older. We'll understand our parents and our grandparents don't get that. They don't understand that dynamic of watching someone play video games on TV. They don't get that. But our generation, as we get older and we become the elders in the world, then yeah, sure, we'll understand the dynamic of watching games on TV and you might get more views in that space. But Big Team Battle to me was huge, man. There were so many capture the flag. Oh my God, eight on eight capture the flag. It's going to be missed. I, you know, I have to reach out to these guys and find out what is happening with Big Team Battle. You got to have Big Team Battle. I just feel like that. You, you know, the four on four dynamic is great. That's cool. I played the four on four dynamic. I played Warzone. Warzone is really, really cool. It really is. Warzone is basically domination with enemies. I'm just going to keep it 100. That's exactly what it is. You capture a base. You go over to another side. You capture another base. First team to 1,000 points wins. However, there are enemies that come in on the map. They can come on the map with vehicles. <laughs> like regular vehicles, like ghosts, banshees. They just come out of nowhere and interrupt you. They be firing at you while you're firing at another person. Really, really cool way to shake up the multiplayer. It really is. It's really sweet. Um, however, at some point, you're going to need something else. 404 Capture the Flag is not going to cut it. The maps are going to be smaller. It's going to be a little bit more compact. Where is me and my team 
Who's driving a Warhol? Who's on the gun? You know, who's my flag guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who's chasing to get the Spartan laser and whatever super weapons in the middle of the map? That's what I miss. The communication between eight guys in the room, you know, everybody's doing their job to get this flag and get the flag back. Who are the two people protecting the base so we don't lose our flag while the six of us go out and try to get this flag? Who's sniping? Like, you lose that dynamic of big team battle. I, they have to bring big, big team battle back. I really hope that is some type of DLC and it's a part of the free DLC and then they have eight maps or 15 maps for big team battle. I really do because if not, I'm going to be solely disappointed and that just might trade in my Halo 5 after I pick it up and beat the campaign. You know, Fallen 4 is great. The eSport part of that is great, but I'm just, I'm a big team guy, man. That's that's my game, big team battle and I'm kind of disappointed in that. Um, recently we did an article on the caffeine developer who spoke about DirectX 12 and how it boosted the frame rates of the PC version of the game by 20%. Um, now 20% sounds like a lot, but it really isn't, you know, 20% is, is not a large number at all. However, if you think about it in frame rates, it's actually pretty significant. I mean, that could be the difference from, from going from, you know, 54, 53 frames per second to hitting a stable 60 or being at 57 and hitting a stable lock 60 and never falling below that. That's really, really cool if you're at around that level. Now, the great thing was that he said the possibilities are even higher on the Xbox One because the Xbox One is basically you know a static console everything in it is the same for every single console so the possibility is even higher compared to pcs that have all these different and limiting factors based on what the parts are so that's really interesting considering we have brad wardell on the show we had we had phil spencer on the show and we spoke about direct x12 multiple times we almost had the direct x12 team on the show highly disappointed that they kind of backed down on me maybe they were scared maybe they were told that they can't come but regardless the point is is that the possibilities of it being higher on xbox one is huge that is huge and it's good to hear from a developer who's working on games for the xbox one um besides brad wardell who literally is like the staple person <laughs> like the staple boy for dx12 with his ashes of a singularity um so it's 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 you think about dx12 how that might impact xbox one you think about cloud compute and how that may impact xbox one and everybody always wants to say that the hardware will never change but the efficiency of the hardware is going to improve and it seems like it's going to improve drastically it may not be it may not improve to the point to where it's like hey you know the games look a hundred times better than any other console however if it plays really smooth and you there's more objects on screen um things look the textures look a little bit more realistic because of the lighting um you have the, the possibility of you know 100 percent destruction in different games in different environments that really changes the dynamic between what's happening in the console market. You know, this console will be doing things that this console was not currently doing. I'm not saying it would never happen, but it's currently not being done and it's currently not being pitched. That's the one thing where I think fans get kind of confused. It's like Xbox One has been pitching this for a while and everyone wanted to downplay it. But now that the Xbox One is starting to prove a point, everyone is saying, well, this will happen to this console too. This will happen on Nintendo. This will happen on PlayStation. And I'm not saying that it can't happen. Of course it can happen. I just think they don't have the resources that Microsoft have at the moment. They don't have the Azure servers as being the, like the second or third or first largest server farm in the entire world, um, along with Google and Amazon. You just don't have those server farms. You just don't. It took them two years just to get this crackdown demo done and shown off. There's not, there has never been spoken any word about, you know, cloud compute on any other console, you know? So other than, you know, cloud streaming, which is a completely different dynamic in what Microsoft is doing. So listen, I'm not trying to badmouth anybody. I'm just saying that Microsoft has the potential to really separate themselves from other consoles. People want to downplay it. We don't know how it's going to look to it fully comes out. But again, 
once again, we're back to the possibilities and the potential of this console being a an amazing console. It already was an amazing console with their virtual S's. It's, it's, they have the potential to take it to the next level. So I'm really looking forward to what they do um, with DX12. And I would really hope eventually that DX12 comes on the show and we get a chance to talk about DX12 on Xbox One. Would be really really all, um, awesome if if uh, you know that was to happen sometime <clears throat> in the future. So a couple days ago, Phil Spencer was having a conversation with one of the fans on Twitter, and he asked him a question. He said, "Hey Phil, will we ever get a Lost Odyssey two, or will we ever get a Blue Dragon two on the Xbox One, um, or will we ever see Lost Odyssey or Blue Dragon on backwards compatible?" <clears throat> And Phil came out and said, well, first, I would like to see Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon come to backwards compatibility first before we do anything else with sequels. Now, I don't know if you guys are recognizing what this man is saying, but the possibility of the the platform releasing a sequel to lost odyssey and blue dragon is there it's there and it says a lot that he says i would like to bring lost odyssey and blue dragon to bc first before going in any direction you know with lost odyssey 2 and blue dragon and i think what that means is that they want to see how many people are interested in lost odyssey 2 and blue dragon you know microsoft has these dynamics um and these data things where they're like this person put in you know x amount of this many people put in x amount of hours in this game and they killed this many people and they shot this many bullets i think what they want to see is how many people are playing lost odyssey how many people are playing blue dragon and if we get enough people playing those games via bc it may warrant buying or purchasing or actually redeveloping and investing in bringing in lost odyssey 2 and blue dragon that's humongous that is huge now we know that the xbox fan base is niche when it comes to jrpgs um but the reality of it is is that there's a lot of fans out there that are always asking for these games. And just to get these games on BC and to see what the fan base does with these games and how it could affect the future of future titles coming to the Xbox One would be huge. He also spoke of bringing OG games, the original Xbox games to Xbox One. And we all know there's a ton of classics, a ton of classics on Xbox One. Could you imagine getting Shinmu 2 BC? Knights of the Old Republic, Jade Empire, Republic Commando, you know, there's just so many games that came out. Boulder's Gate, Champions of Norrath, so many games that came out. You know, Grand Theft Auto 3, <laughs> you know, Grand Theft Auto uh, Vice City, Grand Theft Auto, oh my God, like, just think about that for one second. San Andreas, bringing those games to BC from the OG Xbox? And bringing them to the Xbox One and unifying it all under one, 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 one platform. The Xbox One, original Xbox games, original Xbox 360 games, and then the new Xbox One games would be so big for the platform. It would be so humongous for the platform if that was possible. If those things happened. Um, so Phil is trying to get guys, you know, working on that to see if we can do that. And it would be so great if we can get some of those RPGs, those JRPGs that we had on 360, like Tales of Vesperia, Xbox One, to get those people to re-engage those games that maybe they want, they didn't get a chance to play those games that they probably missed and have them playing it again. It would be really awesome if that happened. And I'm really looking forward to seeing if those games ever hit because I will definitely be picking up all the games I just said, if I had to go out and buy them again digitally, because I didn't have them digitally, I had them hard copy. So I would definitely be going out, buying those games again, just to play those games over um, and just get a feel for what those games were like. And hopefully we get us the chance to see those sequels come to the Xbox One, because it would be so really great to diversify the lineup um, with more 
Eastern games like Lost Odyssey, Blue Dragon, and of course you have the Western titles that we've all been clamoring for, like Knights of the Old Republic and Jade Empire. Would be so good if we can get Bioware back on those games and to make those exclusives again. I would be really, really hyped and uh, very excited if that happened. So Microsoft, then they got a nice little road that they got set up. That's how I see it. Um, I'm really impressed with what's happening. Some things that I said to Phil, and I, somehow. Uh, I had a concern about something I wanted to answer. I didn't get the answer, but boy, did the fan base go crazy. And I kind of caused a division for a second between the fan base, between the guys who didn't care if the exclusives were on PC and the guys who cared if the exclusives were on the console. Um, and it, it blew Phil's Twitter up, man. I'm talking about a thousand comments. And I apologize to Phil about that. I did. I apologize to him because I felt like I shouldn't have did that. I, you know, I didn't really think about the repercussions of what I was, you know, was saying and how that would affect him when everybody started commenting on that. But the cool thing was Phil hit me up, you know, and Phil reassured me, you know, he said, listen, there's no issues. I get the passion and the fear that I could erode the value of the console, but it's my job to convince you I'll do right by Xbox one. And that was just enough for me to say, wipe my hands with it, Phil balls in your court you know you lead i follow let's see what happens let's see what happens you know like the the man has a job and clearly you know microsoft was trying to get back into that pc space and i respect that um i in my own opinion feel like they should be making pc games for pc and xbox one exclusive should stay on the xbox one there's some games you share, of course, if the dynamic works, but you just don't put Xbox One exclusives on PC just for the sake of putting them on PC, just to put them on there, you know, in my opinion. Um, and again, to me, that devalues the console itself. Software, again, is where the money's at, but you still don't want to devalue the console. I still would like to play with people on Xbox One for the games that don't, that, that aren't cross-play. There's a ton of third-party games that probably won't be cross-play. So I don't want those, you know, those communities to die out on something like, you know, Grand Theft Auto. Not Grand Theft Auto, because that's on PC. But, you know, other titles that don't hit PC. Maybe like some of the sports titles, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really good to be reassured by Phil and have him hit me up and let me know um, what his thoughts is on that. And uh, that the Xbox One is a priority as well as a PC and that we probably will see more exclusives stay on the xbox one in the future and i'm glad that that's going to happen so man listen really appreciate everybody stopping in checking out the show this week um I'm trying to get the team back together we have a beta that we are currently working on it's called ticgn.com backslash beta we are trying to build a video game community kind of like NeoGAF, where we can have the developers come in. We tried to do it with the website. Unfortunately, for some apparent reason, um, the back end of the website socially just was kind of broken. This just wasn't working out. Um, so we're going in a, a slightly different direction um, with what we're going to build for our social hub. Um, and I'm going to be, right now, I'm going to call it the Gamer Circle. Um, you can talk about whatever you want in there. You can add photos, videos, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. Um, but obviously, it's going to be dominated by the Xbox community. I'm not stopping anybody from joining, whether you're a PlayStation guy or a Nintendo guy. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm trying to build this community. Please go sign up. We are we are in beta right now. TICGN.com backslash beta. Join up. You can make a profile. We have a chat area. You can put videos up there. You can put pictures up there. Um, you can have music on there. Um, you can write your own blog. You could make groups. Uh, we have forums that we'll be building. Just leave us your comments. It's a blank canvas. We haven't put any work into it. It's literally just a blank canvas. There's nothing there. Um, but it would be good to get people in there, get people talking, get people active, just to get a feel for, you know, what's happening with the, uh, uh, what's happening with the site 
and how we can improve upon the site and make sure that when we do launch and everybody is on there and everyone is talking and communicating with each other we start to bring devs in into the chat area because the chat area is live it's not like gaff where you go on and you make a comment and then you have to wait for that response no the chat area is live they say something you reply they see it instantly you see it instantly there is no refreshing so there's a lot of things that we're trying to do for the community we really appreciate everybody and we're doing this for you um i will be back next week um bringing you another pod shot and hopefully another podcast from tick and um along with adam is green i'm trying to get that worked out questions been sent off to pr hopefully we get a response and we can set up a date and maybe you'll hear him next week on another episode of tick podcast interviews so really appreciate you listening i'm your boy krx kalel the last on the planet xbox and i'm off this planet peace